First of all, we need to track food. And this isn't because of the, the cliche reason of we need to hit certain macro goals. The, the reason this is really important is so you have a good idea of how much you're actually eating. So if you know what 100 grams of fat, 100 grams of protein, 100 grams of carbs actually looks like, if you know what food is actually made of, you don't need to do this. This, this stage is just so you can begin to learn what's actually in the food that you're eating and that way you can change the way that you eat. So it's not about specifically trying to hit certain goals, but it's about understanding like, if you want to gain weight and you under eat, but you think you're eating enough and you're not, you're really going to struggle no matter how much you train, no matter how much other stuff you do, it's just not going to make any difference. So it's not about hitting a certain goal, it's about becoming aware of what food is actually made of and learning how to make sure you're eating enough of it. So I got two apps that I really like. You've got um, MyFitnessPal, that's the most common one. I think you can get that on iOS or Android. The one that I actually prefer is called MyPlate. So this is um, a tracker you can get on Android. I prefer it because I think the, the calorie values are a little bit more, a little bit more accurate. I found that like, for example, an avocado was a bit, the numbers were a bit weird. It was like higher in carbs, lower in fat than an avocado actually is. And I was like, okay, this, that's a bit odd. Maybe there are some types of avocados that are like that. That maybe not like that so much, but it does work. It's, it, it gives you a good general uh, understanding of what it is that you're eating. So make sure that you understand what, what a sufficient amount of food actually looks like. If you've been chronically under eating for a long period of time, you can't trust your hunger and satiety signals anymore because your body's metabolism has lowered itself to adapt to be in a, in a chronic deficit or in a, in a starvation mode. So this metabolism can adjust both ways. So if you've been chronically under eating for a long period of time, your body becomes more sensitive to calories. So when you eat a thousand calories of food, your body uses say 800 of them and then stores 200 as fat. Whereas if your metabolism is really strong and flexible, you could eat 3,000 calories and then your body uses 2,950 of those for energy and 50 grams to turn into fat or to muscle or to, to build you. So when your metabolism, you, this is something you really have to understand is your, your metabolism is super flexible. It can change if you do a fast, it changes when you do a, like a cheat day, it, it changes all the time. And the, the, best, the best thing we can do even this isn't even for trying to gain weight this is just for trying to be healthy is to make sure our metabolism is as high as possible because the higher your metabolism the higher your metabolism is the better wound healing you have the better injury recovery you'll have the better performance you'll have in the gym the stronger your immune system is it basically just has a a net benefit on on everything think about every function in your body that's connected to your your metabolism it's everything literally every single thing so it's detoxification, it's digestion, it's brain function, it's performance in the gym, it's everything. So the higher your, your metabolism, the higher your metabolic function, the higher all of these other things as well. So if we can get that up really high, that's, that's really gonna be good. Doing that, however, does make it a little bit harder to gain weight because when your metabolism's high, it's able to burn through calories really fast. Not really a bad thing, it just means you get to eat a lot and not really gain a lot of weight from it, which is, which is pretty cool. But I think what's important to, to look at here is, when you say you want to gain weight, most people don't want to actually gain weight. They want to gain muscle. So gaining weight, that can look like gaining fat, that can look like gaining water weight, that can look like you can be really inflamed. Like I worked with, there was a, a lady I worked with that had a, a gut digestion problem. She was out here like looking like a pregnant belly. You know, you can imagine this is bringing a lot of extra weight, but just by working on the gut, removing the inflammatory foods, um, helping the gut heal, probiotics, that sort of stuff. Her, her belly went like this and she lost weight. And that's a, that's a good way of losing weight because you're losing water weight that's being held from inflammation. So I think you should, I think words, it's really important to be careful with the words that we use. So it shouldn't even be how to gain weight. It's more how to gain muscle because that's what you really want. Gaining some fat can be really, be really good as well. But what's most important to understand is these are, these are kind of symptoms. So in the work that I do, I really enjoy the results of understanding a concept of something called root cause. So root cause is looking at the actual root of problems and, 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 and what's happening inside the body. So if you understand that your weight isn't actually a root, it's a symptom, it's something that happens after some other things happening up, upstream, we can work upstream to get better benefits down here. So optimizing your metabolism and becoming aware of how much you're eating and making sure that you're eating 
at least the bare minimum for what you would be expected to eat for your for your for your age group with your level of activity. Like for me, I'm I'm five eleven, I'm I'm twenty five, and I train twice a week, and I can easily eat between two thousand five hundred and three thousand five hundred calories in a day, which might sound like a crazy amount of food to some people, but when your metabolism's up there and when you're using the food, like you think, like me doing this, this is, my brain is just burning through calories. Your brain can use 40% of your caloric intake just from doing, like I'm sitting here, I'm not, I'm not moving at all and my body is just burning through them. And I'll, I'll be hungry after I do this because my body's just burning through it so quick. So make sure that you understand how much you're actually eating. So the tracking isn't about hitting goals, it's just about understanding where you are. And then when you realize how much you're actually eating, it might make you think, oh, maybe I do actually need to eat a little bit more. And then once we, once we make sure that, we're, that, that, that our body's hunger and satiety signals are, are accurate and true, we can just follow those and those will give you the best outcome. Because your body wants to be the perfect optimal weight. Like when you think in your mind, you've got this version of you that you want to look like, your body knows exactly how to get you that. It knows how to give you that body, but you have to do the things that it asks. So you have to eat what it asks you to eat. You have to train when you feel like you need to train. And you might say, oh, but nobody feels like training. I don't think that's actually true. I, I love doing exercise. I love going to train. I love working out. It's, it's so much fun to like be in my body and be moving my body and to see the limits. And you have to have, you have, to have access to all of these things. So I'm just going to see if we have any, any questions. Let me know if you have any questions, Matthew. So now I'm going to move on to the second point, fats and carbs. If you want to gain weight, it's really about fats and carbs. So protein, whether, so for example, if you're on a bulking diet, if you're on a cutting diet, if you're healing a chronic illness, if you're doing this or you're doing that, protein is just like, it's almost always pretty much important. So you always want to make sure that you're having, having protein in your diet. Duh, no brainer, right? So how do we go about this? For protein, I would say, don't overcomplicate it. I would just say, count animal protein, don't count protein from, from plants and vegetables. Doesn't mean that there isn't any in there, but when we, when, so protein is such a, you say protein, it's like, well, there's a lot of different things that are protein. Like spider venom is protein, right? Doesn't mean it's healthy. You can eat 15 grams of spider venom, what's gonna happen? You're gonna die. So protein doesn't mean it's necessarily a good thing. You have to make sure that you're eating protein that your body can actually use and it's the right type of amino acids in the right blend of amino acids to be used by your body. And plants, they don't really give us that as much. It's not so bioavailable, it's not the best form. Just, just, it's just so much easier, just count your animal products. I know Matthew, I know that's not a problem for you, he loves his steak. So if you like your steak, you like your eggs, just, just eat that, it's fine. If you're trying to, in trying to increase, you wanna be combining your fats and carbs. So. Basically, whenever you're having carbs, you want to be having some fats with them. Whenever you're having some fats, you want to be having some carbs with them. Just because you're going to feel a, a certain level of satiety for these different things. Like, if anyone's ever tried keto, you know, you eat loads of fat and then you're like, okay, I'm really fat. I'm, I feel really, like, full. I can't eat any more fat. I feel like I'm done. But then you're like, okay, but there's kind of this sweet craving. Because the body, the body can digest these different foods at different levels. So when, you, when you're eating a meal and you're combining both of these in the same meal, you're accessing the different sort of like digestive capacities for these different foods that you can, that you can have. So I've got some examples of, of good, good foods here. So good fats, I know you already know this, Matthew, but for, for everybody else, good fats, anything comes from an animal is good fat. So this is like, you wanna make sure it's grass fed if you can, if you can get it. The, the quality of the, of the fat is really important. So for animal products, grass fed, grass fed is better, organic is better. Even conventional is fine. I eat conventional eggs. It's like, yeah, not everybody's a millionaire. If you're buying like grass-fed eggs and you're doing like 12 a day, that's very expensive. So do, do what you can, just, just do what you can with where you're at. So higher quality animal products, but I would say grass-fed butter is like a bare minimum. So <laughs> go, go with grass-fed butter. The taste is just worth it alone. So any kind of animal fat's good. So that's, that's eggs, that's dairy, that's um, like bacon, that's beef dripping, that kind of stuff. Um, we've got coconut oil, olive oil, and I think avocado oil is okay. I'd prefer to just eat an avocado. So you get most of the benefits in avocados actually come from eating the whole thing. Super high in potassium, really good source of different types of fibers. Just eat the whole avocado, don't have the oil. And as well with olives, you can eat the, you can eat the olives as well. And again with coconut, you can eat coconut as well. But if you were trying to get the, the fat up, they're your best options. 
So for animal fats, I really think butter is the best one. It's, it's so tasty. So you've got butter and egg yolks are really nice. Coconut oil, olive oil, and avocados. And for carbs, your best options are rice and potatoes. You can add bread in there as well if you do okay with bread. I do eat some bread. I don't think it's a problem for me. So if you can, if you can digest bread okay, you don't have like gluten intolerance or you don't have problems with it, then, then just eat it, you know? So when you're having, again, when you're having the, these carbs, you wanna make sure you're having plenty of fat with them. So if you're having rice, do like an egg fried rice or something. Get some eggs in there, get some fat in there, fry it up. If you're having potatoes, mash them with loads of butter, roast them in oil, that sort of thing. If you're doing, if you're doing bread, make it into toast, have some butter on it. Pate is really nice on, on toast. So if you like pate, that's also a really good option. It's literally like 50% fat. You've got liver in there as well. It's, it's really cool. Get yourself some good pate, it can be really nice. Third point, we've got train hard and don't train fasted. So if you're, if you're training and you're doing it first thing in the morning, which is what I would, what I would generally suggest, if you're doing it fasted, you've basically, you're basically just missing food that you could be eating. If you wake up and you're hungry and then you go and train anyway, your body said like, we can train better if you eat. So just eat something. It doesn't have to be massive. A really good sort of like rule of thumb for the minimum to have at a meal is 30 grams of fat, protein, and carbs. So if you can just cover all of those, all of those bases, if you're doing it a more keto approach, protein and fat, just 30 grams. But if you're not, and, and you're doing it with, with carbs as well, stick some berries in there, stick a banana in there, a bit of honey, peanut butter maybe, stuff like that. We've got a smoothie down here, so we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this. This is a really, really good option. So don't train fasted because you're just basically you're, you're missing time in your in your eating window that you could be you could be eating food and when you're when you're training fasted all of the energy that your body is using to train is taking from body fat which can be good if you're if you're cutting if you're cutting down and you want to get a more sort of lean style physique but if, if you're in this stage where you're trying to gain weight, that's absolutely not what you're trying to do. Plus, it, it just fucks your hormones up, okay? Training, training fasted, really not good. Even if you don't feel hungry, it's good to just have, a, I just have a little bit of yogurt, a little bit of peanut butter. Just have something, you know? It just really helps settle your adrenal glands. Because training, especially if, when I'm saying training hard, I mean like, we're going to, we're doing sets to failure. This is high intensity interval training. You are training hard. This is what's gonna stimulate the, mo the most muscle growth. So when you're doing this, it is extremely taxing on your body. It's extremely taxing on your adrenal glands. So we wanna make sure we're buffering those with, with, with resources. Um, okay, so fourth point, drink calories. So one of the biggest things that, that comes up with, with trying to gain weight is being feeling full. One of the easiest ways you can get past this is to just drink calories because it, it can be really easy to get them in and it doesn't really feel like a full meal. So one option here we have is juices. You can do like, if you're doing it at home, you can do like fresh carrot juice. If you're trying to, if you're trying to build, like stick some fruit in there, you know, throw in some, um, some apples, some mango. You can get some, some decent juices at the shop as well. S to be honest, juicing is quite a pain in the ass. I don't always have time to be able to do it or the effort or the energy. I get back from training like today and I'm not juicing, you know, my legs are like, like wobbling. I'm not standing there doing the juice. So you can, you can buy some at the supermarket. If you're buying at the supermarket, you just want to make sure that, if possible, it's not pasteurized. If it is, it's not the end of the world. It's still got some calories in. It's still got a lot of nutrients. It's still got fibers, which will help the gut, the gut flora. But you're going to lose the enzymes, which is one of the really most one of the most beneficial things about juice. It can still be a good option, though. I still drink some pasteurized juice sometimes. It's fine. Just make sure that it's actually fruit juice and they don't have any added sugar. There is plenty of sugar in fruit already. They don't. You don't need to have added fruit to those added added sugar to those kinds of. Um, those kinds of drinks. So just make sure it's all natural. And we've got smoothies as well. So if you're really trying to, trying to bulk yourself up, what I would try to do is just take everything that you're eating right now, keep eating the same way, maybe add a little bit of fat or a little bit of rice or something like that to each meal, maybe. But what I would try is add a smoothie into, into what you're doing. So find some space in your day somewhere for if you're somebody that likes to train fasted, do this before you have your before you train, because you're just fitting it in and it's not interrupting your other meals. You'll actually probably find your performance is, like, is significantly higher. It might take a few days to adapt because you are digesting and performing the exercises at the same time, but once, you, once your body is used to doing that, you will perform like absolutely crazy. Look at like the strongest man in the world, right? He's not training fasted. He's training after he's eaten like a massive amount of food, and it's because his body is just taking the food, taking the energy out of that food and just turning it into just movement for him to be able to exercise. So 
feed yourself before you, you, you exercise. And one really good option is, is a smoothie. So smoothie recipe here, we've got four eggs. So these are just whole eggs raw. We've got one, it's kind of, kind of funny that some people think eating raw eggs is really weird. In the bodybuilding community, it's quite like a normal thing. And then, I don't know, it's a funny thing. I, I've, I've eaten like 20,000 raw eggs, totally fine, never give me a problem. So yeah, I know, I know that's fine. If you're in America, that's not necessarily true. They do some weird thing to your eggs. Make sure you're getting them from like an Amish farm or something like that. Be careful if you're in America, they do weird things with your eggs. One, tab one scoop of protein powder, two tablespoons of peanut butter. So if you don't like peanut butter, you can swap this out with some like cashew butter or almond butter or a really good option that I find is really well tolerated and is actually really nice is tahini. This is toasted sesame seeds. That's also a really good option. 200 milliliters of the juice. So you can use this juice that you've got up here. So if this is juice you made at home, you can use that juice from the store, whatever. You can throw some frozen berries in here as well. I quite like the taste of that. 30 grams of coconut oil. This you can fluctuate. So you can change it based on the taste, what you're going for. I'd say 30 grams is kind of the upper limit with the peanut butter that you've already added and the half the avocado here. I find like going beyond 60 or 70 grams of fat in, in one go can be like a bit much. So if this is too much for you or if you're not used to having coconut oil, dial it back a little bit because it can make you go to the toilet. So do this according to your, your digestive capacity and uh, half an avocado as well. You, again, you can up that to a whole avocado. You can also add, you can basically add whatever you want in here. You can add a banana. I like to add some, um, some like cocoa powder or raw cacao and it basically turns it into a chocolate smoothie. Really nice. You can add your creatine to this. You can add your pre-workout. You can add whatever you want to this. And finally, we have recovery. So all of this only accounts for about 60% of, of maintaining on or achieving your optimal body weight. As I said, your weight is a symptom of your health. So yes, what you eat is important and eating enough is important, but there are a lot of other factors that come into being able to achieve your, your, your weight goals and your, your metabolic goals. So this, all this stuff out here accounts for 60% of it, but the other 40% you have to also focus on, otherwise you're just not gonna get the results that you want. So. Here, we've got recovery. So first of all, taking a digestive enzyme. This can really help, especially if you're increasing your food intake very, very rapidly. If you're increasing your food by more than like 500 calories in, in one go, like you're just going from maybe 2000 calories to 2600, 700 or 800, maybe take a digestive enzyme. This is gonna take some of the, the work off of your digestive system and make it more of a smooth transition. So you can add a digestive enzyme in, that can be really helpful. If you're doing fresh juice as well, that can also really help as well, because as, as I said, you're getting some, you're getting some enzymes there. Um, next we've got massage, and I've got self-massage here as well. So make sure you go and work with a physiotherapist, or um, you get a, I would, I would even say like a weekly massage. I go and see a physiotherapist once a week. Fair, I do have a few injuries that I'm working on at the minute, but it's really important, and this is the thing you don't see. You see like, you see, Olympic athletes and all of these people that are achieving all of the health and fitness goals that you want to achieve and you just see them training. You don't see the stuff that goes in behind the scenes. You don't see the painful trigger points that they get treated. You don't see the injuries that, they, that they're having repaired. You don't see all of the different professionals that are working behind them to, to make them be able to perform at that level. And at a bare minimum, this is work with a physiotherapist or someone that does, does a massage, go and see them once a week and ask them to give you homework and do the homework. So if this is stretches, or if this is, so here we've got self-massage. Buy, buy yourself a massage gun. You can get like a Theragun or just like a handheld um, pneumatic, like vibrating device, and you can just run it over your muscles. It really helps with recovery. If your muscles recover faster, you can train faster. And having trigger points in a muscle makes it weaker, so you can't push it as far as you can if the muscle's healthy. If you have a trigger point that's contracted, you can lose between 10 and 30% of the muscle function, which means you're gonna be, Say for example, you're doing this hard training, you're only gonna be able to train at 70%, 80% of the capacity that you usually do, which means you're not training as fast as you could. So make sure that you're getting the right help with that. You should not have pain when you're training, and that's not normal. In your joints, in your muscles, when you're running, when you're doing anything, you should not have pain. And if you're having pain, go and see someone and tell them I have pain here, because it's not normal. You should not have pain. That's your body telling you something's wrong and you need to get it the help that it needs. Cold showers, Matthew, I know you're already doing cold showers, so good on you for that. Cold showers can really help with, with recovery. Again, this is like, it does reduce 
the muscle growth to some extent, but it's gonna mean you can train more frequently, which is gonna work overall. You're gonna see less increase in muscle mass, so you're gonna look, you're not gonna look as big, your weight will still increase and you will still build the same amount of strength. So it's somewhat about the aesthetic, but it can also make you look quite lean. This is also a really, really good trick for changing the, the white fat in your body. So this is the fat that you have sort of like, like here and like in your belly and all the places where you don't really wanna have fat. And it helps your body turn that into brown fat, which is fat that you store like in your visceral organs at the back of your neck here. And this is the fat that your body burns when it needs energy really fast. So this is, this is why having a cold shower encourages your body to store fat like this because the cold showers make your body mobilize energy really quickly. So just in the same way that this is encouraging your body to make this fat so that you have this fat ready to be burnt when you do have a cold shower and your body needs the energy, this is also stimulating mitochondrial biogenesis, which is gonna increase the mitochondrial density inside the muscles, which means you can lift more, you can lift, you gain strength faster because you have more energy production factories inside the cells, inside your muscles. So combining them together, amazing. And it really help you with your recovery as well. I, I just think having a really good workout and then going to have a cold shower is just one of the best feelings ever. So it's, it's really nice. Um, next, we've got Epsom salt baths. So I wouldn't recommend, I wouldn't, if you can, do it every day. If not, just every now and then will be helpful. Really helps with muscle soreness. Magnesium is going to help you sleep. It's going to help your muscles relax. So many health benefits to it. It's, it's just really helpful. It helps your body to let go of all of the tension that is accumulated. Again, it kind of ties into the, the trigger point thing as well, can be really, really helpful with that. And finally, we've got sleep hacks. So your sleep is so important. If, you, if your sleeping window changes by one hour, so if you go to bed one hour late and you get up one hour later, if you miss one hour of sleep, your, your things like your heart, your risk of having a, a heart attack increases by 50%, your chance of having a, like being in a car, a car crash or a road traffic accident increases by like 60%. Like all the bad things happen when you don't sleep enough. So just sleep, it's so important. Make sure you're going to bed at the right time. I would say like 10, half 10, 11, and make sure you're waking up at the same time the next day. This is something I just, I failed with recently. I was going to bed at like one o'clock, I was feeling absolutely shit. I, I didn't like it, I really didn't like how I felt. So got my, got, my, got my shit together and sleeping properly again, I can feel an amazing difference after just one or two days. So. Sleep is really important, the window is really important, the quality is really important, the length is really important. How can we improve these? So first of all, sleep with a mask on your face. So those things that you get in, a, in, an, in an airplane when, when you're flying a long distance country, and they give you those masks so you can sleep. Use one of them every day. I've used one of those every day for like the last maybe 10 years now. Just use one, it's just, just get used to it. It's so worth it. If you have a noisy environment, use earplugs. So I didn't use to use earplugs, but my nervous system is really still not as regulated as I would like it to be. I get woken up very easily, light sleeper. So I just use earplugs. Now I can sleep with the window open to have a cooler temperature. We've got a road outside, so it's, it's, much, uh, it's much better to sleep like this. So as dark as possible, get some blackouts, make your room really dark, wear a thing around your, around your eyes, use earplugs if it's loud, Make sure you're in a cool environment as well. You don't want to be hot while you're sleeping. That's, that's, that's not really going to help. And maybe don't eat right before bed as well. If you do okay with it and you are trying to gain weight, maybe you can, do, maybe you can get away with that. But I find generally people don't tolerate eating right before bed and then having good quality sleep as well. So make sure that you, make sure you listen to your body on, on that point. So just finishing up. Uh, anything else I want to go over? So if you have any questions about this, just let me know. Obviously, I'll be sort of speaking with you soon, Matthew, so we can, we can cover this in some more detail, talk about how to implement these things in, in your case. If anybody watching is interested in getting some more personalized help, this is something I can help you with, clearly. I know what I'm talking about. I've walked this road and, and I've done it. So if you need help with that, just reach out and let me know and I can give you a hand. So that's everything for me today. Let me check if we have any questions. So. Andre says, this must be one of my favorite videos since I have always struggled not just to gain weight but also to maintain it. Well, I'm really, really glad that you're enjoying the video, so thank you very much. Some people have malabsorption on top of their, of their fast metabolism. I have been to numerous doctors and they always seem to blame it on metabolism. Do you also think that being sympathetic dominant can experience weight loss? Yeah, this is, this is really tricky. So what Andre is saying is, here is, 
he tends towards sympathetic dominance, which means he's sort of stuck in a, in a fight or flight nervous system state. And I can tell you, for me, even, even, even in, in the past when I was eating 3,000 calories a day, so I was keto, I had a lot of food intolerances, I was eating 3,000 calories a day, and I looked like my before photo. I will make sure that you see my before photo, either as a comment or as a, as a thumbnail. That was me eating 3,000 calories a day, and that's because my metabolism was, was really high because my body was trying to turn all of the food that I ate into fight or flight hormones to keep me alive. So you're really gonna struggle to gain weight if you're in a dysregulated state inside your, inside your nervous system because any weight that your body is able to, any extra food your body gets, it's just immediately turning it into fight or flight resources. So finding some more balance in your nervous system can be really helpful there. If that's something you need help with, I can, I can help you with that. It, it's a, a process that takes time, but it's the direction that's important. Is your nervous system becoming more dysregulated or are you moving closer towards it being in a more regulated state. That's what's really important. When we've got dysregulation like this, we don't really have any control over how quickly it, it, it returns to normal, but you do have control over the direction. So just focus on the direction, make sure that you're moving towards a more regulated state in your nervous system and just keep going that way. That's, that's all you can really do. So some things you can look at online for this are things like Gupta. I have a, an ebook on this, maybe you've already read that, the, the Shadow Work Manual for SRT. Um, so, so yeah, it's really important that you work on your, on your nervous system state as well, otherwise your body will just burn everything as, as fight or flight resources. So, that's everything for today, no more questions. If you do have any after this, or you have any, as a, any questions as watching this as, as a video on YouTube, just leave me a comment. Make sure you, you give me your questions. I can't answer them if you don't give me them. There are no such things as stupid questions. I heard something the other day from Jordan Peterson, he said, people that are able to ask stupid questions are the least stupid people because they ask the stupid question and then they get that answer and then they stop being stupid. So if you have a stupid question and you don't ask it, you'll stay stupid. But if you ask the stupid question, you, you figure it out, you don't get, you're not stupid anymore and you have solutions. So I don't even think there are stupid questions. If you have any questions, seriously, just ask me. I'm happy to answer them. It's really important that I know where you're stuck so I can help you. So, that's everything for today. If you found it helpful, make sure you give me a heart, a like, make sure you subscribe, follow me, all that good stuff, and I'll see you soon. Ciao.